All right, so this is uh, not uh, typically what I do, um, but uh, I got one of these guys, hoping it's going to replace my, uh, well not replace, but make my life a lot easier, versus having to get this guy out all the time. Uh, so right away, uh, actually by the time you put the you know air dingus thing on here, they're not really that much, uh, this one really isn't that much bigger than this one. Um, this one's had a hard life, uh, but has worked pretty well. So I've already used this once uh, just to clean up some gaskets. Uh, just, uh, changing out some, uh, changing out the diff fluid for a buddy of mine. So the main thing, the main reason I'm taking this apart. Normally I don't do this. Leave it to other YouTubers. Uh, I want to see how quick this thing is going to accumulate junk in here. Because if this is going to be around, you know, grinding metal all the time, uh, you know, I'm kind of worried about the motor. I mean, they did put a screen back here, but I don't know. We'll see. Another thing I don't particularly like, why could they have not put these numbers, you know, for the RPMs on the plastic? They just put it on a sticker back there. So, eh, whatever. It's got the little tamper-proof uh, fasteners in there. Let's see what size. A little too small. What was that? It's Milwaukee on Milwaukee crime. Alright, so good start. All the fasteners are the same size. That's helpful. Looks like we got a little roll pin here. We'll have to tap that guy out. Well, I do not have a punch that's small enough. So... Seems to be working. All right, that's gonna be a bitch to get back in. Crap around here as usual. Now, get the uh, aluminized stick. Uh oh, something just came out. That's that good. Well, hopefully it will become apparent where this goes at some point. Ah, locating uh, pin thingy. All right, so looking inside here, like I said, the primary thing I was worried about was ingress of dust, uh, you know, into the motor here. So presumably what they're thinking is this fan is going to suck air. I don't know if we can safely... Hmm, probably not. Let's go ahead and slide that back on. I guess we should have checked this before we did it. So it does seem to be blowing air out of here primarily. So I think they're thinking it's going to suck all the air from the back. But there's really nothing that I see that is making it so that has to happen. I mean, this is just a straight cut fan here. Anyway, got a nice little... brushless DC motor fairly common to find nowadays I uh, got the little tactile control switch here separate and the little LED which goes up front I want to avoid taking this apart any more than I absolutely have to got a little uh, 
6000-2RS bearing up front. Seems like a fairly nice, nicely sized bearing. And the rear end is located by a bearing as well, which is uh, somewhat uncommon on these tools. Usually you've got a bushing on one end or the other. Uh, brushless uh, DC motor. Well, AC, DC, AC motor powered by DC switching everything. Switch Mara Quardit. I have no idea. Uh, but we can see here we've got two leads going in there. So we got main power out of the battery coming to the switch, ground coming out, and then also a set of data cables here. So there's going to be a set of wipers in here that are going to give it resistance. There is a, right at the beginning, just a little detent there, which is making or breaking power. Uh, you know, once we put this back together, we'll have to see. I don't recall this actually really having much variable speed control off of this switch. Maybe it does, who knows. Everything's nicely potted, which is good. Nice big beefy heat sink on the outside here aluminum heat sink and then going into the motor itself I'm gonna have let's see here everything's glued going into the board so that's a nice little little touch obviously this thing's gonna be seeing a lot of vibration solder joints are gonna be the weakest point of uh, any of this kind of stuff and uh, that's what you don't want uh, uh, well, that's where it's going to break, if it's going to vibrate and break. So you can see, I don't really want to take this apart, but you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six poles around there with some uh, laminations on the outside, uh, which I believe these increase the effectiveness of the, uh, the brushes. Like they... Uh, they uh, what would you say? Um, uh, increase the flux of the magnetic field, so you get more more force out of it. Uh, we got so we've got three phases coming in here. I do believe, yeah, one, two, three phases. The grounding must happen through these guys. And then a couple of these must be for monitoring the position and speed of this guy. So there's going to be a feedback loop that's going to keep it from, uh, from uh, well, it's going to maintain a certain speed. I already threw away the sticker, but we remember the sticker uh, was uh, had different RPMs. So it's going to maintain an RPM based on, well, just monitoring the motor. So as you increase or decrease the force, you know, press harder or whatever, it's gonna maintain roughly the same RPM. Uh, in the casement here, we got PA6 uh, GF30, it's nylon 66 grass fiber reinforced. Uh, TPS SEB S. I don't know what that is. I think that's the TPS older over molding, uh, which is like, uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. Like butylene rubber or something like that. I don't know, I can look that up and uh, leave a thing down here as to what it is. Uh, and then I'm guessing this is like a lot number or something. Five, three, blah, 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 right? Fairly nice mold. Huh, different number up here. So I have no idea what that would be. We also got date stamps here. So this looks like uh, probably I don't know if you can see that. Well, this, uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. This says 19, so that would be 2019. And I'm guessing this is the seventh month here. Uh, looks like they plan to keep the mold in service for a while because these numbers go up to 24. So, you know, as they go through their production, they'll, uh, they'll uh, do that. Or they'll, well, advance the little clicker so they you know what you got. Uh, looks like these screens are affixed with uh, kind of like melted rubber rivets, more or less. 
That's kind of interesting. Seems like it's in there pretty solidly, though. I mean, I feel no play at all. Plenty of support up by the front and rear bearings. So that's... Oh, that comes apart. So that's not too bad. Wait a second. Does that whole thing twist? No way. I didn't say that in the brochure. Huh. Well, we're going to have to put that back together. Oh, you know what I bet that is? I bet that's mitigation for uh, vibration there. So you got all the, uh, you know, all your electronicals down in here that uh, are going to gonna vibrate. Or, well, this is going to be vibrating when you're going against stuff. And that's going to dampen out some of the vibration. So, anyway, not bad. I mean, there's plenty of mitigation. There's plenty of... Uh, 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 that cotton formal coating elastic stuff on here that's going to keep at least the big chunks of metal out which is my primary concern being that this is going to be used you know for metal related stuff I was concerned about uh, metal working its way in there and uh, contaminating the boards and the motor and whatnot but I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue fortunately so, I'll try and put this back together and uh, maybe show you what I was talking about with the, uh, the speed control. I'll be back with you shortly. Yep, almost forgot the little. So, this little guy feels like, uh, I mean, it could be nylon. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. Feels too uh, lubricitous to me uh, to be nylon. Feels kind of like maybe Teflon. And that is in here, and I believe the purpose is uh, there are separate locating dowels uh, in the uh, casement here. So it's not location uh, or to help locate everything as it goes back together. Speaking of locating, there we go. I believe the uh, idea here is to kind of catch on the back of the battery there to kind of give you a, a nice little bit of snapshot when the battery goes in and out. No shortage of screws, that's for sure. So one thing I don't like, uh, I wish someone could come up with a better way of affixing the uh, collet to, uh, to this thing. Um, just because it's kind of annoying to have to go find wrenches. I guess, I mean, 99% of the, well, you know what, to be honest, uh, this guy's had this little, uh, what do they call them, roll lock uh, carrier thing on it since, you know, probably the day after I bought it. And I don't think it's ever come off. So, yeah, but, I mean, once in a blue moon, you're going to have to, you're going to want to put, uh, something different on there and you're gonna need you know a skinny wrench I mean that they did make that wide enough that you probably could get a normal wrench on there but eh, what are you gonna say so anyway let me uh, grab something to grind on a little bit what is that all loosey-goosey oh forgot the uh, paddle switch here See if we can get this back on without breaking it. Place your bets. Eh. Went in no problem. Just got a TIG welder practicing a little bit. I mean, it's got plenty of power. So you can see here when it starts up, I guess it does have some variable speed control. So if you just go full chew tread off the bat, eh, that's a bad example. Let me see one here. So you can hear it accelerate and then it just kind of slows down a little bit and kind of maintains speed. Eh, you can just barely make that out, but. Thank <laughs> you. 
But I mean, it's got plenty of power. I mean, it chews through. I mean, this is the type of stuff you're going to be doing anyway, smoothing out welds in tight spaces, cleaning up little paint spots, stuff like that. I mean, it's not bad. This is a little pricey. I think it was like 180 bucks, you know, if you buy it without the batteries. But not having to get out of the air, get out the air hose, and not having to, uh, uh, you know, wait for the air compressor and yada yada yada. I don't have a big shop compressor here, so uh, if I had that, it might be a different story. But just not having to drag out the air hose and everything. This is going to come in real handy, especially for uh, making my welding look a heck of a lot better. But uh, anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.